Hello and welcome to EGM 702, Week 5, Part 5, Accuracy Analysis. To be useful, we need to have an understanding of how accurate our classification is. Any classification will have errors, but whether we can trust the results and whether we can use them to draw conclusions about what it is that we're studying depends on being able to quantify these errors. We have a number of different ways that we can use to try to evaluate a classification. Perhaps the most common method works as follows. First, we take a random sampling of points within our study area. Typically, we want to sample around 1-2% to of the pixels in an image. We then look at each of these points and determine what class they should belong to. If we can, we might also go and check these points in the field in a process known as ground truthing. Finally, we compare the results of our manual classification with the results of the automated classification in order to determine the accuracy. When we do this comparison, we most often use something known as a confusion matrix. Now, I've seen these displayed in a number of different ways. Sometimes you might see the true values as the columns, while the classified values are the rows. Other times you might see it as I've done it here, with the columns moving this way, representing how the pixel was classified by the computer, and the rows moving this way, representing the actual or true class values for the pixel. So as we move across the top row here, we see that we have pixels that belong to the A class that the machine has correctly classified as A, pixels that were incorrectly classified as B, and pixels that were incorrectly classified as C and we can keep going for each of our different rows. The overall accuracy, that is the percentage of our sample pixels that were correctly classified by the computer, is the sum of the diagonal. The true A, the true B, and the true C divided by the total number of sample pixels. This is one way of reporting the accuracy of the classification, but it is not the only way, nor even necessarily the best way. For instance, it doesn't tell us anything about the pixels that were incorrectly labeled as a different class, the false B and the false C pixels in the top row here. This is what is known as an error of omission. The classification has omitted these, or left them out, of the correct class. It's also known as a false negative, or a type 2 error. We can calculate the error of omission for our A class by adding the number of false B results to the number of false C results in the top row and dividing by the number of pixels that should have been classified as A. And you can do this for each of the other classes. A second type of error that we might want to know about are errors of commission. That is, pixels that have been incorrectly included in the wrong class. These are also known as false positive results, or type 1 errors. The way that we calculate this for our A class is by taking the pixels that should have been classified as B, but were classified as A, adding these to the pixels that should have been classified as C, but were classified as A, and then dividing by the total number of pixels that were in the A class. Next up, we have the producer's accuracy. This is the probability that the class has been correctly classified. In other words, it tells us how well our classification scheme has done identifying or classifying a particular class. This is calculated as either the number of correctly classified A pixels divided by the number of pixels that are actually classified as A, or 1 minus the error of omission. Finally, we have what is called the user's accuracy. This is the probability that a given pixel on the map is correctly classified. In other words, it gives us an idea of how well we can trust that the classified map actually represents the truth. We can calculate the user's accuracy as the number of correctly classified A pixels divided by the number of pixels that are classified as A or as 1 minus the error of commission. But this isn't everything. It is possible that our classification only looks good as a result of random chance, which doesn't mean we've done a good job classifying the image. It just means that we got lucky. 
One way that we can check this is by calculating something called a kappa coefficient, or Cohen's kappa coefficient, or sometimes called just kappa. Whatever you call it, this is an indicator of whether the accuracy is due to random chance or not. It's calculated by subtracting the probability of chance agreement from the observed agreement and dividing by 1 minus the probability of chance agreement. And of course, we can prob calculate the probability of chance agreement as just the sum for each class of the percentage of our sample pixels that belong in that class times the percentage of our sample pixels that are classified as that class. We'll work out an, ex an actual example on the next slide, so don't worry too much about this just yet. Kappa typically has values between 0 and 1. We can have values less than 0, but this is really bad. It means that our classification algorithm has actually done worse than random chance. Never a good sign. If kappa equals 0, it means that we haven't done any better than random chance. Again, not a great sign. It suggests that our classification results are not particularly reliable. Values greater than about 0.5 are considered to be moderate or good depending on who you talk to. To put this another way, a value of 0.5 means that we've done 50% better than we would expect by random chance alone. This is a lot to take in, so we'll try to go through a worked example here. To make the maths a bit simpler, we'll stick to two classes, land and water, and say that we've drawn a sample of 30 pixels from both land and water. From our confusion matrix, you can see that we've correctly classified 24 pixels as water and 21 pixels as land. So our overall accuracy can be calculated as 24 plus 21 divided by 30 plus 30, which gives us 0.75. An overall accuracy of 75% is generally considered acceptable to good, again, depending on who you talk to. Next up, let's calculate the user's accuracy. For water, this is the number of correctly classified pixels, 24, divided by the total number of classified pixels, which is 33. 24 divided by 33 equals 0.73. For land, this is 21 divided by 27, which gives us 0.78. So what this tells us is that a pixel on the map that is classified as land is slightly more likely to be correct than a pixel classified as water. To calculate the producer's accuracy for water, we divide the number of correctly classified pixels, 24, by the number of sample pixels, 30, to get 0.8. For land, we have 21 divided by 30, which is 0.7. So this means we're doing a better job classifying water pixels than we are classifying land pixels, but with the user's accuracy, we also have a higher rate of false positives for water. To calculate the kappa coefficient, we can start with this formula here. For water, the chance agreement is the percentage of our sample pixels that are actually water, which is 30 divided by 60. We multiply this by the percentage of our pixels that are classified as water, which is 33 divided by 60. The percent actual land is also 30 over 60, and the percent classified land is 27 divided by 60. So if we put all of this together, we should get 0.5. So what this means is we have a 50-50 chance of correctly identifying a pixel based on our sample. If we then plug this into our formula for kappa, we get an overall accuracy 0.75 minus the chance agreement 0.5 divided by 1 minus the chance agreement 0.5. All of this gives us a kappa value of 0.5. In other words, our classification scheme is 50% better than what we would expect by random chance alone. So, we have a moderately successful classification. Hooray! In this lesson, we have learned that accuracy assessment is the key to understanding how reliable a classification is. If we don't know how good a job we've done in our classification, we can't know how useful our results are. To do this, we compare our classified image to either ground truth data that we've collected in the field or by manually classifying test points in our image. Often, we might use a combination of our two approaches. 
We want to assess both the overall and by class accuracy. This can help us to identify where we might need to improve our training samples or our input data in order to help us improve our classification. Finally, we learned how to compare our results to the likelihood that our results are due to random chance by cal calculating the kappa coefficient. Once again, you can learn more about the concepts we've covered in this lesson in the textbooks, Chapter 7 of Lewis and Kiefer and Chipman, and Chapter 13 of Jensen. I've also included some links to information about how to perform an accuracy assessment for both of the software packages uh, that you've used so far in your course, either for ArcGIS or Airdos Imagine. And there's also a link to a shorter video that shows how you can do this in Airdos. That's all for this lesson. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post them in the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.